Yeah. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Hoody, hoody, hoody. Hoody, hoody, hoody. Actually, I, before we start this, and I know people don't really like this little segment where you take the piss out of me, but you took the piss out of me a few weeks ago in one of these interviews. Oh, you're always never looking at the camera, right? Since since we've done that, you've posted two photos of you yeah, but, not looking at the camera. But, but, Colin, you have to understand, there is a significant difference between paparazzi taking pictures of me, watching a fight, right? And you saying to your mate, yeah, with his iPhone, what are Seamus, take a photo of me, will you? And let's just uh, with, with your ripped jeans on. And as he takes a photo, you go, and look down at the floor. You know, I can't help that wherever I go in the world, the world media have got cameras on me. This is your mate from the local boozer taking a picture of you in your rascal clobber, looking down at the floor, trying to be all sexy. And then you actually have the audacity of, so the actual photographers reached out to me as well and said, I'm sick of taking photos of Eddie. He never tags me in it. So you have the audacity to post these photos and then you don't even credit the person taking it. That's even worse. I don't, I've got, we've got Mark. Never gets a credit. No, but what? I mean. Maud never gets a credit. Well, but that's the, I mean, I don't get, like, like you know, when, when you post a picture at fight night, yeah, of the show that I have done, do you give me a fucking credit? Oh, Always. amazing night at Eddie Hearn, you know, thanks. You don't, do you? So cut the bullshit. Cut with your stupid pictures looking down at the floor with your silly ripped jeans on. Right? Didn't even have ripped jeans yes, on that. Yes, you yeah, she did. You, you've got ripped jeans. That's an absolute heinous crime. A heinous crime. Don't ever... You and you know it that you're sitting there, you're you're melting, knowing that you're trying to talk about my aura, right? My swag, and you wear ripped jeans. Don't ever do that again whilst you wear that kind of monstrosity. Jeez, right? We better start talking boxing yeah, before I get. Well, I got rid of them since you slagged me about it, but okay. And obviously, um, big news this week: the zone have teamed up with Frank Warren. Could you have ever envisaged a situation where, let's, you know, roll back a little bit. Whenever you came out and Frank was going, oh, he's on the app and there was that little animosity between you. Could you have ever envisaged this moment happening? No, not really. I mean, I think that firstly, like, whenever something happens, people always play old interviews back, don't they? They do it to me all the time. Like, life changes. Things change. Um, your opinion changes. Um, and... You know, I think the coming together of... I, I don't necessarily think that... No, I don't know. I was going to say, would this have happened without our coming together from Riyadh season? Maybe, maybe not. But it's made it a natural fit. You know, five years ago, I made this move to design. We got laughed at. You know, people were saying that... Sorry, now you're filming me on your phone. What What are you doing? I'm doing a social clip, Brad. Well, what I'm, you, I'm you're talking up. about me, yeah? You're, you're I'm doubling up on a social clip. Pictures that come out. Th yeah, but this you're is just, how hard. You're filming me on your camera. You're filming me on your phone. Yeah, because this is how hard I work. I'm doing a social clip for IFL while I'm interviewing you. You want to do numbers? Yeah. Do another one. Yeah, and you know, people say, "How to how to how to watch me on IFL later." How to how to. There you go. But. But in terms of like Frank being on the app, right? Obviously, it's a massive thing in British boxing that you're both on the same platform. Do you think this hinders each other in any way, or does this help each other? I think it's the the only you know now that we've been coming together, working together, making fights. The only other obstacle that we had to overcome was he's with TNT, we're with the Zone. Have to be some kind of cross promotion still, and we've seen that you know, on a regular basis with Riyadh season. So it wasn't something that, but it's still an obstacle to have overcome. Now, it's open season. Now the only obstacle to overcome is who's going to do what fight when. Do you know what I mean? So like, you give them one, they give you one. You know, we just did Shabazz against Liam Davis. We'll probably do a Queensbury fight on a matchroom show. So that's just a bit of pull and pull with George and to decide who's going to do what show. But, don't listen. One thing you've got to understand is we're still competitive, and so are they. 
we still want to be number one. They still want to be number one. We're on the same platform. It's not, this isn't, oh, we're all on the same platform. I don't really care who does the better shows. It's just for the good of, no, no, no. We're number one. And I want to prove it. They think they're number one. They want to prove it. Well, we, technically speaking, after the 5 v 5 you're kind of maybe not number one. Of them. I mean, actually, do you know the score's 7-4 since the inception of Riyadh season? Elaborate. Okay. Since Riyadh season began, Jai Opatara against Ellis Zorro, Chev Clark against er Ellis Zorro, Sky Nicholson beats Raven Chapman, Shabazz Massoud beats Liam Davis. That's four wins for Matri. Five wins, obviously, on that night, plus Kakachi beating Joe Caldina and Kakachi beating Josh Warrington. So just to confirm, you're still second then? That's for, that, from, a, from a score perspective, yes. But from an unbelievable perspective, no. But seriously, we want to be. We want to prove that we're number one in the UK. You you referenced on your story yesterday and your little, you know, thing where you ask yourself questions and you answer them, and you say, "Oh, it's Colin McGregor going to bluffer. Oh, he's such a bluffer." No one actually wrote that to you. Confirmed. You 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 wrote about a, the difference a quote. between me and you is when I say question time, I get five thousand questions. You get about three. I don't know if I've ever done Probably that. not even three. Do one today. You'll see. Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do it together, actually. Um, you, you wrote one that said, like, oh, we'll do cold promotions together. Is that something that when you sat down with the zone, you said that? Oh, listen, I said that yesterday. It's all over the media today. Eddie Hearn and Matram doing co promotions with Queensbury. No, people said, would you, will you be doing co promotions with Queensbury? Yeah. Because we will be having our headline fighters on Queensbury shows, which will be, a, I'm sure which will be a co-promotion, and they will be having their headline fighters on matchroom shows. That goes back to what I said earlier. I don't know, say that Chantel Cameron fights Sandy Wright, right? Do you do it on a matchroom show? Do you do it on a Queensbury show? Say that Peter McGrail wants the rematch, you know, after he beats Dennis McCann. Matchroom show, Queensbury show. I don't know. Uh, Daniel Dubois rematches Anthony jo jo John Stan. So... What I'm saying is we're going to be working together on shows. That that's it. That was before DAZN, and now that's obviously with DAZN. And this is such a strong move for DAZN as a platform because we talk about it being the home of boxing. UK boxing's a wrap, really. Like, it's such a powerful move for UK boxing. If you are a UK boxing fan, you have to have DAZN. There's no, there's no, it's not, oh, shall I get DAZN? No, it's an absolute no-brainer. Throw in the other amazing content around the world that we're putting on. This is the global home boxing. Does it give you more leverage in the likes of purse bids where you can say, now you and Frank are both on the same platform that really you can freeze others out? Is that also... No, I don't, it's, it's not... I, I've definitely not got the mentality of freezing others out. That's just something that happens if you keep performing. So purse bids are just a, an open marketplace for fights. But yes, of course, like sometimes if you were... Uh, not talking, and there was a purse bid, it would be, who's going to get it, TNT, you know. But we're still going to be aggressive with the purse bid. This isn't, this isn't a holding hands exercise, and just this is a, a, a continuous collaboration between the two biggest promoters in the UK that are changing the sport and making British boxing great again. And it's amazing news for fight fans, and I'm very excited. Simon Jordan had some comments today. I don't know if you've seen them yet. He said that the zone isn't a great platform. And that really they haven't done very well. Just your reaction to that? Um, when he says they haven't done very well, I mean, they've come into a sport with no brand recognition at all in boxing and they have become the global home of boxing. Is there a major fight that isn't on the zone? Can you answer me that question? I mean, if we're thinking, there's obviously fights across major, the board. Go on, go on. If, if there's, there's fights on PBC, for example... That they they might do in America won't be on. What, no Alvarez, it's on the zone. Belanga, Mungia, it's on the zone. Canelo's last two fights have been on the zone. Yeah, there isn't a major fight in the world that is not on this platform. And that plonker that wants to sit there, right, and talk about Conor Ben and all this other thing. Once again, you're wrong, right? You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. And it doesn't matter what Simon Jordan says. He has no history in boxing. He has no knowledge 
commercial knowledge of the sport. He has had a couple of conversations with a couple of people. The zone are incredibly profitable in the sport of boxing. As a platform, they're one of the biggest platforms in sport worldwide, not just in boxing. And they have built themselves as the global home of boxing. What they have done is quite incredible. But you will always get people like Simon, who are so salty, they just cannot sit there and go, do you know what? Wow, what a move from zone. Wow, look at what zone are doing. Wow, look at zone's schedule. Wow, Eddie Hearn's the man, because he can't do it. Because you know what he'd rather be doing? He'd rather be doing it. He'd rather be me. What do you think he'd rather be doing? Sitting up there today by the rocky steps, giving the world a press conference about a huge night at the Wells Fargo, or having a cup of tea on TalkSport? This is the problem with Simon Jordan. The green-eyed monster is a dangerous, dangerous thing, and you can't take what he says seriously, in my opinion. He's a brilliant radio broadcaster. So much fun for TalkSport. But again, just ridiculous comments. But that's what he, that's his game. He has to create talking points. And by even saying that, he's creating talking points. Obviously, we've, we have had some big news come out this week about Conor Ben. Um, a long time coming, and a lot of people will say, there's you know comments online now, oh, we need to wait on the UK appeal. Just um, your instant reaction, really, to, to the news that Conor Ben is now um, cleared by NAPD. I mean, just huge pride, huge... Um, Conor Ben, I was on the golf course actually with Frank Smith and he FaceTimed us yesterday and there's a lot, I, I want to make a few things clear. This isn't a gloating exercise because, you know, we want to move on, right? Conor Ben has been fully cleared of any wrongdoing in a full NAPD hearing and I'm not going to go into too much but there's a few things that I really need to clarify because it's important. When people say, idiots say, with zero knowledge, oh yeah, well, now he's served his silent ban. There has been no silent ban. He has not been found guilty. He has been fully cleared of any wrongdoing. Do not sit there and say, yeah, well, oh, how convenient, he served his ban, now he can fight. There has been no ban. Okay? The other line, yeah, well, it probably wasn't, they didn't even look into it, it was probably jurisdiction. Wrong. This is a full hearing. So I'm not going to sit here and gloat because, in my opinion, justice has been done. And now we move on with the career of Conor Ben. But what I won't do is just let people who have no knowledge or understanding of the situation just say or presume, oh yeah, this happened, this happened, because it didn't. So, Connor refused to accept any guilt because he had no guilt. And instead of taking advice, which at times might have looked like decent advice, or just to say, well, you're better off just saying, oh well, like everybody else does, take a slap on the wrist, you'll be back in the ring in six months, a year. He said, no, I'm not doing it. He said, I'm innocent and I'm going to prove my innocence. And yesterday was that day where all his hard work, all his faith paid off. So you better get ready for the fierce, ferocious return of one of the most exciting fighters in British boxing because he is ready to go. And it feels like we've almost got a new sign and it feels like we've got this superstar that's back out of nowhere. And he'll be flying into Philadelphia tomorrow and we've got to get it right, what we do next. We have got so many options, it's unbelievable. He could fight Boots, Stanionis or Barrios for the world title next. He could have a 147 fight and a guy in the top 15. He could fight Chris Eubank Jr. There are so many things for Conor Ben to do. And this kid, when he comes back, I can't wait. Whatever you think of Conor Ben, trust me when I say this kid has been through hell and back. And even after this, after this full hearing, where he's been fully cleared of any wrongdoing, 
at least give him the respect of saying, well, fair play. Because all the things you want to come back with are false and incorrect. So some sometimes you have to go, well, fair play. And he's back, baby. And he's fucking, we're going to light the place up. Do you think the Eubank fail is likely next? I mean, look, Connor's instruction to me are is, get me the biggest fight you can get me. Do you not think it might be beneficial to have a warm-up fight this, this far? Probably. Probably. But when you've been through what he's been through, he wants to make up for lost time. You know, he, don't forget, he had those two fights in America. And they were like warm-up fights. And it's like, it's so hard um, to get yourself up for those fights, you know. He wants a big one. and But he is also in a great position. We're really pushed for time. So last one from me. I haven't even got speaking about this fight week this week. We've been on other subjects. But AJ Dubois, what is your position as we stand right now, Edward? What, who do you think that AJ will face next? Obviously, it's not going to be Dubois. Yeah, I think AJ might fight Dubois next. Oh, you think he'll just take a a, a bit of a layoff then until next yeah, summer? I mean, physically, he's not ready to go back into camp. He had a few niggles coming out of the fight and in camp. He would have to go into a February 22nd fight, not 100%, to be honest. And he wants to do that. And we have had to say to him, very difficult. You know, when I get on a call with Ben Davison, Freddie, 258, KD, all of the guys, Heine, and you've got Anthony Joshua pleading to let him fight on February the 22nd. And you've got his doctor, you've got... You know, his physio, you've got all these people saying, AJ, you, you can't physically start camp in three or four weeks and be 100%. Yeah, but I can beat him. I, can, you know, I don't want to lose the opportunity to rematch him. And it's like, mate, if we get this wrong, you're done. Yeah, but I can beat him. I, can, you know, I said, you can't fight on February 22nd. This guy, it burns. I mean, the Conor Ben situation burns people. This burns people so bad. Right? So when I say this, just do me one favour. Feel the burn. Anthony Joshua is the biggest star in British boxing. It's simple. Maybe even world boxing. He just got beat. We can walk into any fight in the heavyweight division basically at any time. And I've had to explain to AJ because... It's very, Simon Jordan said it's a very dangerous thing sitting on the sideline if you're Anthony Joshua. Blow the one away. Right? We can do whatever we want. And what we're going to do in this final chapter of Anthony Joshua's career, we're going to get it 100% spot on. And we're going to come back in the best physical and mental condition for one last assault at the heavyweight division. And if that's against Daniel Dubois in May or June, which is a likely, or if it's against Tyson Fury in May or June, which is, again, real probable. But for me, there are only really those two fights that are the focus. And that's the rematch with Anthony, uh, sorry, with Daniel Dubois, or it's the fight with Tyson Fury, win or lose, against Alexander Usyk. Edward, we'll start it there. Appreciate your time, mate. We're ready to fly in Philadelphia, baby. Let's fucking go.